um, or I'll never succeed uh, with what I'm trying to do. We persist in running the race. That's what we talked about last week. You run the race. You get to stay in there to finish the race. You don't go into a race to go halfway through and say, oh, I quit. It matters not if you win the race. It matters that you complete the race. And so the same way with prayer. Um, I, oh, I, I just was wondering if there was something. Go ahead. I just had a thought that, uh, you know, was a very, very beautiful uh, analogy of what we're, we are talking about. And I just wanted to share it with you and, uh, you know, whoever is listening um, that, uh, you know, the way I, I really, really just saw it is that everything is a relationship. And in each relationship, there is a spectrum that's created. And so uh, through a prayer, you know, you're asking for accuracy and pinpointing uh, a specific point in that spectrum. You're projecting thoughts and and, and, and total will into you know, where you're going to land on that spectrum. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm trying to get this image in my mind, too. I I mean to say, I mean... uh, Let's just venture into a little hands-on with prayer. uh Yes. And uh, give people an idea about... Now, in my everyday course of life, and they may think, oh, you, I wouldn't be praying about that. I pray for parking spaces. I pray for green lights if I need green lights because I'm running a little behind. I pray for, Lord, tell me what I'm supposed to have for supper tonight or dinner or whatever. Uh, Jesus tells us to pray so we won't be tempted And then I love this warning he gives us, be diligent at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations. Well, there's all kinds of tribulations in life. So we need to be praying for the moment-by-moment grace of being able to smile when we don't feel like smiling, for one thing. And, you know, these are the times that I forget about praying. I forget about to say, oh, God, I really need some extra strength today. I really need some extra grace today. And, you know, I need to start praying that prayer more often. Uh, so think of some of the things that you prayed for that were little things, and people would might not think, well, I wouldn't pray for that. I would, like one person said, I wouldn't bother God for something that little. But he said to come to us with everything. He's a big God. He can, you know. What are some of the things that you prayed for that was a little thing? Um. You know, just as 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 simple as like, gee, I hope I can, you know, make it make it there soon. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like whenever you do, whenever you go on a trip, do you start your? Tri- I know we always do. I've always taught my children to pray traveling prayers, and I include things like no re- no breakdown, no flat tires, no bad weather, no bad traffic. <laughs> and sometimes the list gets pretty long because, like one time. We traveled 2,000 miles only to about 50 miles from home. A, a rock chipped the window. So no rocks chipping my windows <laughs> was added to the traveling. And then one day I realized that the traveling prayer is a prayer that you can use in your journey, everyday journey in life, where you ask God to protect you from all harm and evil, any breakdowns of mind, spirit, so, uh, you know, any breakdowns of um, anything in life that is going to uh, you drop something and broke it, whatever. Uh, flat tires can be correlated to uh, things just going wrong, and you're trying real hard for them to, to work together and click together. So there's a lot of symbolism there in the traveling prayers for everyday life traveling and uh, prayers. Uh, just be comfortable in talking to God about everything and really realize now, uh, oh, getting back to why God doesn't, why well, it seems like sometimes that God's not answering your prayer. Um, he has to allow things to happen because he gave free will to mankind. Free will is necessary if we're going to be able to love We have to have free will. We can't be robots. If we're human beings, we have to have free will. But free will also means that there's bad stuff happening in life, and he has to allow it. And so 
to be thinking that God doesn't care. Otherwise, he would have taken, you know, he would have prevented things from happening in your life. He, because of free will, he could not, he had to allow it. We, mankind has a choice to, to do what they want to do. And it's sad to say that because of it, there's a lot of terrible, horrible things that happen in the world. A lot of pain and a lot of struggle. I mean, we can read the headlines today and see it right and left. Um, we just Yesterday or Wednesday, a uh, 11-year-old boy died in a house fire because the fire, I mean, the stove, they had a wood stove in the house, and three, the other three members of the family suffered burns. And Lord, we pray for that family. They're dealing with the loss of the son, but they're also dealing with the fact that they're in the hospital with a lot of burns. So give them the grace, oh my God, and the healing quickly of the heart, soul, and spirit that the thing about it was, did he want that to happen? Of course not. When we have winter time, and they tell us all to be careful, be careful with your fires, your space heaters. Uh, those are the biggest reason why fires start in the winter time. Space heaters too close to clothing, and the uh, wood fires, of course, uh, the flu not uh, being taken care of or checked out and stuff. I was trying to think how many. You know, I know there's been times in your life too, Zolene, that. Uh, you weren't thinking uh, something as simple. I know just yesterday I had to pray, Father, do not let me forget to put the rubber bands back in place on my lady's trach. Because if you don't put the rubber bands that connect the trach line, I mean the vent line to the trach, that uh, if she coughs too hard or something, other, it, pop, it could pop out that inner cannula. So there's always this protective thing of rubber bands. And so every time, I'm always saying, Lord, help me remember this. Help me to remember that. Uh, are you at that point in stage in your life, something that you need to pray, help me to remember this? Uh, yeah, I, I really do. I think it's a, it's a prayer for unity. It's a unity to attention, to be one with uh, what whatever it is that you're doing and all the processes that are involved in. And I think... Uh, when when one you know prays for focus and clarity and attention, then you know the the amount of those uh, things that can go wrong uh, become a little bit more limited. You know. Amen. And we've got to be careful what we speak because sometimes we can say that oh well, things are going something's going to happen, and it does happen because we thought it. <laughs> we've got to be careful what we speak or what we pray for too, as far as that goes. Uh, you're right. Uh, it's it, your whole life. Your whole life is uh, we got to be focused and stay focused. Otherwise, things can happen that uh, we go, ah, I, we, you know, we messed up. Uh, I'm trying. I'm thinking about the different times that you took the wrong step and you landed, <laughs> you fell. <laughs> and, uh, and it's because you were careless. It's because you were moving too fast. And and went to, two days ago, I was coming up out of the refrigerator bent over trying to find something up underneath there and came up too fast and hit my head on the uh, handle above on the freezer door. And, ow, that hurt. <laughs> but that's the way it is in life. Slow down. Be careful. And to always ask for God's protection and help. Um, I'm trying to think of other reasons why people will feel like that prayer, or I pray, uh, it doesn't make any difference. But... It does make a difference because somebody out there somewhere, there's a ripple effect of your love going out when you say a prayer. Like one of the things that can help you, um, by myself, I, it's hard for me to just have general prayer. Like there's many ways you can pray. Open the Bible and, and read the Psalms or read, you know, the, the words of the Bible or prayers in themselves. Uh, singing a song is a prayer of... Uh, so all day long while you're, you know, you could be thinking of songs that make you feel better and things like that, and you could sing a song to help you feel better. Uh, like uh, one of the songs that we went out with uh, was, Bring me sunshine with your smile. So, you know, songs are very important to help you to stay your spirits up and keep your spirits up. Find songs that are going to make you feel good if you're having trouble. Uh, and the other thing, thanks to Google, you can find all kinds of prayers on YouTube of all places. I don't know if you know this or not, 
that uh, some of the prayers that are on YouTube, I love this one, uh, it's the Mercy of God chaplet, and they sing this chaplet, and it's just saying over and over again, For the sake of a sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And that just sing it over and over again, it goes with the... Um, the rosary, it said with the rosary beads, and so there's ten for the sake of this sorrowful passion, have mercy on us in the whole world. And then, Eternal Father, we offer up to you the body, the blood, the soul, the divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and the sins of the whole world. So if you yourself feel like, I don't know the right words to pray, you can find all types of prayers on YouTube. And it's in song, usually, or just recite it. Uh, for those Catholics out there who find it difficult to say a rosary by themselves, YouTube now has the rosary, uh, all four, all the Sorrowful Mysteries, Joyful Mysteries, the Glorious Mysteries, all, all of the sets of mysteries, luminous mysteries. They now have, YouTube now has that. So there's no excuse for, I just can't pray by myself. If you feel like it helps you to find, you know, to listen to someone say prayers and, and uh, go to YouTube and they're there. Uh, the next thing, where to pray. And the, the answer to the right way to pray, where's the best place to pray and when's the best time to pray. Always, anywhere, and any way is the right answer to that. Any way that you want to talk to God is just as long as you've got your heart in it, anywhere. And, you know, you can be praying in the car. You can be praying uh, as you're walking. You're just talking. You're just thinking about people. You're putting your love and your heart into thinking about people. Oh, I got to bring this in. Very, very important that I bring this in. When you're praying for someone else. Very crucial that if you want your prayer to be effective for that person, that you harbor no grudges against them. That you make sure that when you're praying for them and you want the best for them and you want them to be happy, you want them to be well, that you have forgiven them for anything that they have done to upset you or hurt you. If you want change, there must be forgiveness. That's what the, why the Lord included that in the Lord's Prayer. Father, forgive them. As he was on the cross, too, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And in the Lord's Prayer, he said, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us, our debtors, or our debts, our transgressions. There's three different words used there, but forgive them, Father, and forgive us. When you're praying for something, that's important that you humble yourself and admit that I need to ask forgiveness. So that, you know, just think about the child and the parent relationship. If you're a child that goes before the parent with a cocky, stubborn, uh, it's all your fault. <laughs> and I didn't do nothing wrong. If you have that type of attitude, you're not going to get anywhere with your parents and receiving what you hope to receive from them. But if you have the kind of attitude that says, oh, oh, I messed up, I'm sorry, you know, the parents going to pick you up and love on you and hug you. So that's okay. You know, we all make mistakes. And that's the same way it is with prayer. We need to go to God with that humble, Father, forgive me, I messed up, and or, I've been proud, and I've been arrogant, and I've been stubborn, and admit what you've been, so that you can open that door for the Lord to really bless you with the way you want to be blessed the most. Uh, which brings me to what we really want when we pray. We want peace of mind. We want a happy heart. We want for others what we want for ourselves. We want the best for them, and we want them to be well and to be happy and to be, for, you know, if, uh, if you're having financial problems in your life, pray for the people who are dealing with that. If you are blessed with a good home and the roof, no rain coming in or leaking, be thinking about the people that are not 
they're out under a bridge or they're in a refugee camp.